So this valve here is an auto air valve. This auto air valve works in conjunction with a pilot valve and a Thompson valve. So how do I know there's something wrong with an auto air valve? There's two things that'll happen. One is I'll find that air doesn't pass from the bottom of this down to the Thompson valve. And that's identified by this little fitting here, which has the airline come down through it, tees off and goes down to the Thompson valve. So when the pilot air comes down to here from this particular valve to this one here, if this diaphragm in here is punctured, ruptured, the piston that's in there won't lift off the seat and allow the air passage down through the pusher line to the bottom of the Thompson valve. Another indication that there's a hole in this diaphragm is when you lay or leave the blast nozzle laying on the garnet, the spent garnet, you'll see that you've let the dead man go and there's still air exhausting out of the blast nozzle. That's a primary indication that there's a hole in this diaphragm. So you can see here we've got a big brass nut and on the top of the big brass nut we have a breather. So again that breather, same, same circumstance. That breather needs to be clean and blown out. I would do that before I pull this valve out, before I start checking the diaphragm because it could just be a dirty gauze breather so that it can't exhaust the, the spent air on this side of the diaphragm. Now if you find that with this still on the blast pot, that that's not the cause, you've blown it out and replaced it, it's not the cause, so what do I do now? Well, I'll put that back in place so I don't lose it. That'd be a good idea. So what do I pull apart here? I know, I'll undo this great big brass nut. That'd be a good idea. Let's have a look here. So I've got a 12 inch shifter. Oh, hang on, that doesn't fit either. So what do I do? Should I get a cold chisel and start bashing that off because I don't have a big enough shifter? In behind this is a big spring. It has substantial tension on it. So the last thing I would take off is this. What I'd be more inclined to do is look at the body and say, okay, then there's a series of bolts here. Would I not be better off to undo those four bolts rather than try and undo this big nut? Because all that's going to do is expose the spring to me. And then the worst of it is you have to fight the spring to get that brass back in this cast housing. What are the consequences of that? If I'm trying to compress the spring and start a brass item into a hard cast thread, I'll strip that thread because there's not much chance of me holding that big nut square while I'm trying to compensate for the spring tension. So what I suggest you do is, if you have established that I need to have a look at the diaphragm in here, I would suggest that you undo these series of bolts and take the whole housing apart. So keep these items together and you'll find that on these ones here, 7 16 is the size of these nuts. So they're AF, not metric. So undo all the bolts and make sure you capture any parts. So look, someone's had this apart before and they've lost a spring washer. Would I go and get another spring washer? Well look, if I'm out on site and I don't have any choice, I'd put it back together, but also too, in the repair maintenance book for this or log book for this particular item, I would note in there that there's a spring washer missing so that somebody ultimately will replace that spring washer for me. So in parts of this particular item, you can get a ratchet ring open ender on there and manage to hold the nut because look, they're, they're not nylock nuts. So because they're not nylock, I can hang on, hang on to them with my fingers and disassemble the unit easily. Some people prefer to wear gloves when they're doing this. There's no corrosive components here, there's no solvents, there's no abrasive, there's nothing. All I am is undoing this particular item that's clean and hanging onto the nuts. So can I damage and cut myself? The chances are quite remote. So on a risk assessment, it would be very, very low. So just make sure that the area that you're working is clear and clean. So if I do drop something like I just did, the spring washer, look, I've recovered it. I could see where it was quite easily. So with all the nuts removed, it pays to wind these bolts out because they are wound through a neoprene rubber diaphragm.
Look at that. So four bolts, one, two, three, four. There's three spring washers. There's only two there actually, and four bolts. So there's two springies missing. So what I'll do is when I put that back together, I'll put those two spring washers diagonally opposing, one there and one there, to ensure that I pull it down and it's pinched in the diagonal. There's no point putting those two spring washers if that's all I've got in the same side because this side can actually come undone. So have a look here. We've got that big brass spring and oh, look at that, I must be psychic. There's the spring. So the spring fits up inside that big brass nut. So now you can see what I'm talking about. If you leave that housing on there, you are fighting that big nut to try and compress that spring. And there's quite a substantial amount of recoil force on that. So the tension on that is quite substantial to give you some indication of how strong pneumatics are under pressure. There's the top. Is there any gaskets? No, there's not because that is the gasket, the diaphragm. So the housing itself, it's corroded slightly. Well, it's cast. So of course, it, it, it's susceptible to corrosion. Is it of any consequence or significance? Not really, no, because it's, it's only mild rust. So it's surface rust, and it's not undermined the integrity of the housing itself. If there was scale rust in there, it'd be a different story. Then I'd say, well, has it undermined these ceiling surfaces? In this case, a little bit of corrosion. What would I do with that? I'd probably just give that a bit of a clean up with some wet and dry, wire brush even, and just wipe a little bit of primer on there. Uh, an Alcott primer is sub substantial, it doesn't matter. Um, even a bit of grease will do the same thing, but I'll talk about grease in a minute. So just to, so you can see what this valve looks like from your viewpoint, I'll turn it around slightly. So we've got here a diaphragm and oh, I can't get it off. Oh yeah, it slides up and down. Hang on, it doesn't come off. What I don't do is give that diaphragm a hard time. Why? Because I might not have another one. All I'm checking here is to see that there's a perforation in that diaphragm wall. So what happens under pressure, this is what it actually does. It goes up and down like this. So that diaphragm does that under pressure. So it's moving this up and down on the shaft. So on the other end of this is a piston but it's a little bit of a contract to get to it. So we'll undo this nut and we'll have a look underneath. So what you will need is a ring spanner that fits. Why wouldn't I use an open ender? Because it can slip around. So what you need to do is, you need to go to the appropriate size, which is half inch. There it is. So you see the ring spanner is going to hold it nice and tight for me because what I'm going to do is put a screwdriver in the centre and then make sure that I'm undoing it. So what was it I said? Righty tidy, lefty loosey. So hang on to him in the centre and undo the nut. So lift that out of the way now, hang on to the diaphragm, undo the nut. Now, the trap for young players. This is a slotted stem. So if you let that screwdriver slip, you'll burr that end over. What does that matter? When I try to undo this nut, it'll come up to that burr and I can't get it undone. Now I'm in a situation where I have to try and hold it and ride the nut over the burr. Or, ultimately what I can do is reinstate the nut back in its position, grab a file and tidy up the damage that I've done to that edge so that I've got some chance of getting that nut back off that stem. So all you need to do is file a little taper on the edge of the damage and be careful when you do this too. If I want to keep that diaphragm, what have I got to be careful that I don't do? run the file across the diaphragm itself because it could damage it. So look, with your finger up underneath it to support yourself, gently take that edge off. Let's go back and have a look. Oh, look at that. It comes off. Now look underneath this. There's a nut. There's a brass. Big brass bush. And a copper washer. So the copper is designed to be soft. Why is it soft? Copper softer than brass in the noble chain of metals. It's a lot softer, primarily because the nut, when you screw it down there, has the ability to squash into the copper, impregnate it in such a way that it actually jams it on the shaft. Why didn't they use a spring washer? Because there's inherent problems with putting spring washers in there and it doesn't quite seal around the edge of it. So it does a couple of jobs. Now, here comes the brass backing washer and look on the other side of it. Oh yeah, there's another one. So how do I get that apart? You'll find that because 
there's been possibly moisture through there, you'll need to just take your time and pull it off there gently. Because remember, I may not have another diaphragm. So this particular unit is an inch and a half auto air valve. So there's the diaphragm. Well, that's great. Now what do I do? What you need to do is hold that up to the light. And if you hold it up to sunshine, and if it's night shift, hold a torch in the back of it. So even a simple item like a small torch will do the job. And of course, I can't find it quickly. There it is there. So look, a small torch is enough to see if there's any perforations or holes in that diaphragm. And in this instance, it's not too bad. So what else would I be looking for within this diaphragm? It's just a piece of rubber. Ultimately what happens is air gets hot and rubber tends to become embrittled or hard. And you can see from the frayed edges here that this diaphragm's done a fair bit of work. And you'll see also too that the rubber has lost its elasticity to a certain degree. So what can happen is it can tend to crack down these edges and you can't see them with the naked light or looking through them but they are substantial enough to undermine its ability to seal that environment. Also too, you can see he's got a memory. So he's been squashed in one position all this time. Would you turn it over and put it in the other way? Absolutely not, because what you're asking it to do is to exceed its expandable surface. It'll work for a little while, but you'll find it starts to leak. So in essence, that particular diaphragm I would, uh, or gas, gasket edge of this one, it's been undermined. It's got a bit of age on it, so I'd be inclined to replace it if I had a new one. Now also too, you can get a kit for this particular unit. So this auto air valve comes with a repair kit. You get a new diaphragm, you get two new brass washers, copper washers, sorry. These copper washers, they come in the kit. So there's the other copper washer that's the backing washer for this brass backing washer. So now I've got a stem looking up at me, and oh look, there's a piston inside. So if you can see inside there, there's a piston. Look at that. Look at that, Jimmy, it's great. There's a hole, the piston goes down and seats. So what happens is when you let the dead man go, this goes right to the bottom of its travels and seats in the bottom there on that particular seat there. So what do we need? Do we need to go any further? We've established maybe that the diaphragm might be a little bit aged. Well, with the kit comes another set of O-rings, seals and stems. So if it was me, I'd be inclined to look further because it might have a subsequent problem related to this diaphragm. The subsequent problem could be that that rubber piston face is not seating on the seal, the O-ring seat for it. So let's have a look. Now, how do I get that out? Just to so that you can see this a bit better, I'll turn this around. Look at this, there's two slots. Can I get a shifter in there? Let's have a look. Well, what am I gonna do? I don't know. Look, the easiest way to do this, there is a special spanner. It's called a slotted spanner that slides over that stem and goes into those little slots. But I'm out on site, I don't have one. What should I do? Look, you can use a cold chisel and it'll drop into that slot for you but the only thing you have to remember is, I'm going to hit that, so ensure that it's nice and tight. Sometimes on site, you don't have a vice. You can use alternate types of securing this in place. You can put it under a bench and jack it into position, but ensure that when you start doing those sorts of things, that it complies with the wh &S requirements on site. And also too, Common sense prevails, so if I jam that under something and wedge it, if I hit it, it could fly out. So just make sure that if you do look for alternate securing arrangements, that they are substantial enough to hold this valve in place. <clears throat> I would be more inclined to use a pair of Stilsons, which will come up and the jaws will bite this, and I can lay the Stilsons on the ground, put my foot on it, and then, by hitting this, it won't move. So. What I need to do is, you think, what's he doing? He's taking a cold edge to that, a cold chisel to that edge. Well, if I do manage to burr that over, what I'll do is I'll have that file there to dress it back up again. So let's have a look, see how tight it is. 
it's quite tight. So what I need to do is position myself so I can't hurt myself. And if you wish to, you can put a pair of gloves on. Um, welder's gloves are good in case I miss. But because I'm an old tradesman, let's see how we go. So what I've done here is, now I'm starting to wind that out of the auto air valve. So now it's coming quite freely. So remember when you put this back together, to put it back together with something that's going to be a lubricant and make it easy for me to undo. So let's have a look here. Underneath this, there's a stem. There's the cap that we've just undone. And in that cap is an O-ring. And also too, look here. There's a seal in there, there's an O-ring in there. So that O-ring seals this onto that stem. So that eliminates the passage of air out the top and what we call blow by or leak off. So there you go. That's what's inside there. But let's have a look at this fellow. On the bottom here, we've got a nut, another brass bush or keeper, and then there's a piece of rubber under that. So that piece of rubber has to be seating on something. Well, there it is there. There's the seat. So how on earth do I check that that's okay? Before you put the new ones in, what you can do is, if you had some bearing blue, it'd be great. But we don't have any. So let's wipe something around there that's going to indicate to us that that is seating. So what I've got here is just a little bit of Loctite, which is blue. I'm going to slide it into place like so. Now, if I just put that in there like that, that can touch at any time. So I need something to keep it square. So let's pop that back in there like so. Hold the piston up off the seat. Get that in, start at a couple of turns. So just keep turning it backwards until it does start to turn in there freely. There we are. Now, what I'm going to do is push that piston down into the seat like so. It's touched. All I need to do is turn it like so. Half a turn's plenty. Undo this. Take that out. Let's have a look. Is it wet all the way around? It's a bit difficult for you to see, but in actual fact, I can see that that liquid I put on there has touched all the way around, and I can see that it's impregnated the wet stuff that I put on there. Look, you can use anything, a bit of Vaseline with some graphite mixed with it, anything you want. As long as you can establish that that seat is touching and is flat all the way around. Now, if it's not flat all the way around, you'll need to put a piece of inch square tube in there and it'll slide in between those two lugs and with a shifter on the top of the square tube, you can undo that and take it out. The, but if that's flat and square, underneath that, there's another O-ring just like that. Do I need to take it out? Not really. You're not going to gain anything by taking it out. And the other thing is too, that when you look underneath it, you can see if there has been any air blowing by it. And if you can, you can see that it's all a dark color and dull looking, you'll know for a fact that there's been no blow by because this piston basically seals that there. And if that O-ring doesn't show signs of leakage, leave it in there. So all I need to do now is check this shaft for damage and premature wear, or a scour up and down the shaft itself. How do I find that? Just run your fingernail around the edge of it. And look, I found one already. So gee, what do I do with that? How bad is it? Look, it's not a bad scour, it's just a bit of a mark. So with some 600 wet and dry, and a little bit of lubricant, such as even throat seal oil, oil, I don't care if you use engine oil, and what you'll do is you'll wrap that 600 round there, nice and gentle, and then run this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, moving it in and out, as well, and back, as, well as back and forth. And that will eliminate that, the edge, the sharp edge of that scour. So if it's not too bad, you'll find that you'll be able to achieve that with some fine wet and dry. So by taking that scouring mark out, you're not going to undermine the integrity of the O-ring itself by this operating in and out, in and out. So what I would replace is this particular flat gasket here. And it is a flat gasket. It's quite, it's, it's quite um, disconcerting because you think, oh, it's another O-ring, but it's actually not. What it is, is just a flat gasket underneath that. Now look, can I hang on to that and do that? No, not really. Gee, what do I do? How on earth do I hang on to that? Oh, I know. I put a screwdriver in there and I'll put it up against myself like this and when it slips off, I've stabbed myself in the hand. 
Not really smart, is it? So, oh, hang on a minute. Why don't I put it in the vise? Well, if I put that in the vise and do it up nice and tight and pull on it, what do you think I may do to this here? I could squash it and it's no longer round, so it's no good to me whatsoever. So, so gee, what do I do? I can't put that in the vise that way. I, oh, I know. What if I put this in the vise like this and get the vise to hold the nut? Look at that, Jimmy. It's great. Now, what I can do is, can I use a nice big screwdriver? Yes, I can, but just look to make sure that it goes to the drop in the slot. So let's see if I can undo it like this. Oh, gee, it's a bit tight. Oh, I don't know. It's not moving. How can I do this safely? Well, let's assist the purchase. Let's have a look at using this. So hold that screwdriver down. Try and hold it square. Oh no, that's not working either. Gee, what can I do? Well, you see, with that slipping like that, what I'm doing is I'm actually flaring the head of that. So let's find the nut that went on there, like so. And we'll screw that down. Now we can try it this way if you want to. I can put that in there and that'll hold that nice and square for me. Let's try this. Oh, hang on a minute. I can't get the shifter in there now. What do I do? Well, I'll tell you what you do. With the new one comes another nut. Because you see these body nuts don't fit. So with the new one I can slide and put another nut on there and tighten the two up and then I can undo it that way. That's probably the safest way to do it. So not to damage the slotter section of the thread, what I'll do is I'll put another nut on here. So now I'm making an appropriate means of undoing that nut underneath without damaging the shaft. So I cannot hold this with a pair of pliers. So for example, you can't go like this and squash that and undo that nut because you're going to scour the shaft that has to run through an O-ring that needs to be airtight. So in essence, if you put a pair of Stilsons or anything on that, you're just asking for trouble and the thing won't work. So here we are, look, I've put two nuts on here. Let's see what happens when I tighten these up. So what I'm doing is pinching the two nuts together. Now let's see if the whole thing comes undone. So slide the shifter on there and away we go. So now what I'm doing is I'm undoing the nut underneath that was causing us so much grief. So let's have a look. Undo this. Like so. So what the problem is, is when they assemble these from you, they decided it'd be a good idea to put some Loctite on there. And it's red Loctite, so it's 242, it's quite, it's quite substantial and it'll stay there. So remember, if they put Loctite on there, they did it for a reason. That's for that nut to stay there. So you really need to put Loctite back on there when you do it back up. So that's why it was so tight to get undone. That's why I had no chance of getting that undone with a shifter and a spanner. And besides, you've got more chance of hurting yourself or stabbing yourself with a screwdriver. So just think a little bit smarter outside the square to get that off. So now we've got that nut off. We've got the added problem of getting this off here now because there would be remnants of Loctite in there. So if I wanted to save that O-ring, if I didn't have another one, you can cheat a little bit. So if I'm on site and I don't have a new kit and I think, wow, what am I going to do? Well, how do I get that off there? Look, that comes off there, no problems at all. And also see, too, you'll see there's another copper washer. But look, I'm still no better off. I can't bang that because I'll knock it out, of, out around. So put it back on there. Just start the nut back on there again like so, you don't have to do it up. And then select yourself a nice fine little screwdriver, one with a very pointy end, like so. So remember, I'm gonna try not to damage that gasket underneath there, but what I will do is just release gently. There you go. So there's the backing washer release. So now I can undo this by hand, take that off, grab my little screwdriver again, pop it underneath and slide this off, like so. So there you are. So put that down like that because you need to put it back like that. Because have a look, it's got a taper or a bevel on that face. 
there's not one on that face. So that means it's got to go back in that position. But look under here. We've got another section that's holding that in place. And that is the boss backing section of this particular bush. So slide it back on, very gently, pop the screwdriver underneath the gasket and pop it off. And as you can see, look, where this bush has been sitting, there's a recess, and that section there is the section that seals on the marrying side of this particular valve, which is in there. So to remove this slotted section, what you need to do is utilise a cold chisel and hammer. So it's important to wear the appropriate safety gear, like your glasses, a pair of gloves, and undo the unit as such. So by wearing your glasses, if the cold chisel manages to remove a shard of that, it won't get you in the eyes. And of course, your gloves will keep you safe. So there you go, we've removed that. So there's the backing, the O-ring, the piston, the stem. So this gasket that I've just removed, there's, there's the impregnation. So all I need to do is, if I don't have another one, turn it over. Will it work? Absolutely. Because you see, that's going back down in a backing plate. And of course, I've got a brand new rubber surface. But will that work forever? It'll work long enough until you get a new kit. So there's nothing wrong with doing that, as long as you know that you need to replace this rubber eventually. All I need to do is put that back on there. Now I need a little bit of Loctite. Now this is where the sneaky part starts. Because we're not going to use the red Loctite, there's no need. If you use a 243, it's just a thread locker. Now, do I flood it in it? Do I put copious amounts on there? Absolutely not. Look at the tiny little dot I put on there. That's more than enough. So replace the nut that goes on there, like so. Now you can, you'll find that you're about to wind that all the way home. And also too, with your little spanner that I sat on the bench. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Away you go. Now, how tight do I do this? Well, you'll need to put a little bit of pressure on it because you don't want it to come undone. And besides, it's not gonna hurt anything. What you'll find is when you get up too tight, the shaft will start to spin around plenty tight enough. So there you go. That's just replaced that rubber. Now that rubber is a brand new face that'll fit on that seat and seal that beautifully. So there's one other thing we're going to do before we finish here is when we put it all back together, we're going to tip a little bit of water in there to make sure that that seat is appropriate. So water like air will pass through most of that. So look, whack this back in here, hold that nut, pick up the screwdriver you dropped, grab your little spanner and away you go. Now look, you might find jumps around, just pick up another castellation on the nut underneath and undo that top nut. So there you go, that's that one undone. That one undone. I haven't damaged the shaft. I haven't damaged the, damaged the slot. I haven't damaged the thread. <sighs> Happy days. So we take that back out of there, sit it there, bring the jaws of this open. If you don't have jaws on site, use a pair of Stilson's. So there's a nut on that one, so I need to bring that back out again and grab the back of it. If I over tighten it, can I squash this? It's cast. You can break it, but my word, you'd have to put a lot of stress on there for that to break. So, this is the stuff, graphite dust. Now look at this stuff. Now, it's quite a fine powder, and you can see the graphite now. That's the shiny aspect of it. So that graphite dust is a great lubricant because it's dry. And you'll find too, now it's become very slippery. So as I said to you before, you can see now why you'd wear gloves, because it gets into your skin. Is it harmful to you? No. People say that it's, that it's made up of lead. Well, that's, that's not, it's made from graphite. So it's the same as a, a pencil that you use to draw. It's not lead in the pencil. If it was lead, it'd be harmful. So now that I put graphite on that, I'll run some graphite on this as well. 
I'll slide that back through the new O-ring and you'll find you'll have some resistance now because the new O-ring is a little bit harder to get on there. And there you go. Now you can check that that slides on the shaft. Beautiful job. So, new face, O-rings, put it back in there. Oh, but hang on a minute. I put a bit of damage on that. Take that back off again. Hold it flat, get the file, take the bird, jet, bird edge off. The bird edge off. One, two, three, four. There, there it is. So that was the leading edge that I bird up. I've got rid of it. Now, I've just got filings here everywhere. What do I do now? Well, look, I can blow it out like so. I can use an air tool to blow it off if I wish to. But just inspect in there now to make sure that I haven't got any filings. So there's nothing wrong with using a piece of rag to do that either. So fold a piece of rag over the end of the screwdriver. Don't stab yourself. Wipe that out like so. Wipe it out from the other side. Is there any filings left on the rag? Absolutely not. A bit more graphite dust in there. Spin it around like so. Slide the shaft, the shaft back in there. Like so. Can I get that round the wrong way? Well, when you go to screw it in there, look what it is, it's backwards. So no, I can't get it around the wrong way. In I go like this. Now, what you need to do is pick up that thread relatively easily. So, a little bit more lubricant, like so. Now, just go back and forth, take your time. There's no rush to make sure you pick that thread up appropriately. So just push the piston down so that it sits down on the seat. And what you need to do is rattle this back and forth until you pick the thread up. Because what I don't want you to do is start tapping this around and cross thread it. Because if you, if you hit this now with that chisel and it's not appropriated in the thread and started in the thread properly, you will actually cross thread it. So look, keep working it and there you go. I'm in the thread and it's winding down. So keep working that graphite back and forth until it goes down. There we are, we've touched the new O-ring. So now what I need to do is just reinstate a bit of tension back on this. So again, with a nice sharp cold chisel, put it in there, tap, tap, tap. Just check that again from the other side because I've in inserted all the thrust on one side. Go back to this side, tap, tap, tap. Check this side again, tap, and it seems to be tight. Just check it that it's home. One, two, no, it's still moving. So what I'm going to do is continue the thrust on that until I'm satisfied there's enough of that unit that's gone home to the seat. Now I'm picking up some good resistance. Can I over tighten it? It's a parallel thread, so it'll just go down until it runs out of thread. It's not a tapered thread, so it doesn't bite. Parallel thread. So I just keep tapping that round. And there you are, it's stopped. So I know that that's tight. So just wipe those slots out now to ensure that you haven't left any slithers of brass behind. So next time I take that out, if that leading edge is sticking up, I'll just dress it with a file exactly like I showed you to before. Is there any chance that that diaphragm, the new one, can touch those sections? No, because look what you're going to do. You're going to put these big shims or bushes back on the diaphragm itself. So they hold the diaphragm in the centre of that taper. So it can't possibly touch what you've just burred up if you did manage to do that. But don't forget you've got two copper washers, top and bottom and you've got to go back on the shaft. So lift that up, and if you want to, you can hold that up. Look at that, I can turn it with my finger. You can hold that up with your fingers underneath. So what do I need to put on there? I need to put those copper washers, copper washer back on. Oh, it fell to pieces, what do I do? Well look, what you'll find is, you can put that bush on first, and because it's a new diaphragm, you'll find that you'll have to push it back over that area, like so. Put the other bush on. Can they go either, either way? Absolutely, no problems at all. Your copper washer, and then of course, the nut that goes on top, which was on here. Now, that doesn't need to be over tight, and you don't need to put Loctite on it even, but you do need a screwdriver that'll fit inside that nut, 
And again, like I said, it's important that you use a ring spanner. And what was it? Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Round this way, tighten it up, hold it with the screwdriver. So if I damaged that slot, I'd find that that nut would probably not go on there and cross through it. So look, hold it, do it up. That's it, look at that. So it's all been repaired. Put the holes back over in the diaphragm that are already pre-cut. Don't forget your spring. So we were a bit concerned about that. What can I do? Well, look, because I don't like oil in these or grease in these things, there's nothing wrong with a bit of graphite dust in there. Rub it into the pores of the corrosion. Believe me, it's not gonna get any worse. Put the spring back in. Do I need lubrication on the spring? No. So then I put the spring on there, sit it over the nut, put the body in like so. Which way does it go? Normally that points to the front, like so. So look at the spring resistance I'm fighting here. So you can imagine if I'd undid that nut, it would have been quite a triumph to get that back together without stripping that particular brass nut, retaining nut for the spring. So push your, now sometimes you'll find that the hole in the diaphragm is not cut very well for your bolts to go through. You will have to fight them slightly. There's nothing wrong with winding them in there through the diaphragm. So then, of course, I don't want to fight that upside down. So then just tip it backwards and you'll find that it's much easier to put those nuts on. So tip it backwards like so, hold your nut in place, your bolt in place, put the nut on, and remember what I said, look, I've only, I'm on site and I've only got two spring washers, so diagonally opposed will help the situation until I can get some more spring washers. You will need to replace them if they weren't there when you dismantled it. So there you go. This one on here, like so. This one on here, like so. And that puts us back together. Now, remember what I said. The ones with the spring washers are diagonally opposed, so they're the ones that we'll do up first. So just wind him up until you see it's starting to pull together, which it is now. Go back to the other one on the diagonal side of that. Do that one up. So what you're doing is you're pulling the diaphragm down evenly and not pinching it in a corner or not getting the bolt caught in that cast. So there we go, far enough. Go to this one, you see there's a small gap there. So you watch as we pull it together now and we're pulling it together square. And if you can't hang on to that particular nut, you can have a, a smaller shifter that will appropriate the head of that particular bolt and some idiot's got graphite dust on his fingers, which is very slippery. Here we go. So do him up. So I'm doing the nut up, not the bolt. There's a reason for that. Back to this particular one here. Do it up. Hold it with that shifting wrench. So yeah, sockets are my preference. But if you're on site, you're not gonna have them available to you. So I've got those two done up nice and tight. Now what I can do is, can I get that on there? Yes, I can. So I can spin that up until it comes up to the body. And then remember what I said, you're going to do the nut up. You're not gonna try and do the bolt up because the pitch of the bolt can pinch in the, within the housing and you'll find that you think it's tight. In actual fact, the bolt's gone tight. So just hang on to it again. Nip it up, bit of tension on him, back to the opposing one, which is over here. Tighten him up, so I've pulled it up square, so there's a good chance that I've not pinched the diaphragm in the wrong position. Now we can go around the bolts to check that we've got them nice and tight. Yes, opposing one, nice and tight. Hang on to him, yes, just check him again because the shifter moved. Like so, lovely. There's no need to over tighten these because they are what we term really an agricultural bolt. They're just a BSP thread. So if you over tighten them, you'll strip them. And once they strip, once you strip them, you can't use this particular valve without four securing bolts because you've got 100 PSI pressure over it. 
So there you go, we've just done an auto air valve repair. So that particular unit, when the air comes into it here, it lifts that piston off that seat to ensure that you've got free flow down your pusher line, down to your Thompson valve. So if you do that, keep yourself safe, do it properly, don't compromise, you won't have any problems.